Hello, here the morning news. After the Obama administration declared Venezuela to be a threat to U.S. and national security early this month, the South American country has launched a petition campaign to have the White House repeal the decree. Thousands of workers marched towards the You're presidential offices in Caracas, where Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro addressed the crowd. Sites will be set up around the country for Venezuelans to sign the letter to the U.S. government and people demanding that the decree be revoked. Latin American regional organizations have unanimously said Obama should reconsider his actions. President Maduro insisted the decree amounts to a serious threat against the country. You are in agreement? The campaign, Obama, repeal the imperial decree, is approved. We have to continue. We have to get the decree revoked, because that order here is a sword at the neck of our nation. Meanwhile, in Washington, the Organization of American States uh, has chosen a new Secretary General. Our correspondent Alexandra Hall was there and spoke to the leaders from the region who said the OAS itself needs a new direction. At the Organization of American States on Wednesday, secret votes were cast in an election with only one candidate. The winner was Luis Almagro, former Foreign Minister of Uruguay and now Secretary General of the OAS. For some member states, his appointment is an opportunity for transformation. La solidaridad será mi principal eje rector. A ustedes, como representantes de los pueblos de las Américas, me debo y les agradezco su voto de confianza. Almagro replaces José Miguel Insulza, a Chilean lawyer who held the position for nearly 10 years, a period of time during which some say the organization lost its steam. Los espacios de diálogo tienen que ser espacios donde todos los estados puedan dialogar en igualdad de condiciones, pero además tiene que ser un espacio de debate y de reflexión entre los estados, no un espacio de imposiciones de, de, de una u otra posición. The new leadership is tasked with restructuring the organization and making sure that it takes stronger positions on issues of development, human rights and poverty. Allies say those conversations are already taking place. He basically had a conversation with all the member countries during the last six, seven months, and his opinions are not any longer his opinions, are the opinions of a movement of countries in the region that won't change. Change that's urgent at a time when U.S.-Latin America relations appear to be going in two different directions. While the United States and Cuba normalize relations, Venezuela's dialogue with Washington looks more tense than ever. A new strategy in the hemisphere could be just what these countries need. Por la trayectoria de Luis Almagro, nosotros conocemos muy bien toda su trayectoria de lucha, de compromiso, sobre todo de respeto a la voluntad del pueblo el mandato del pueblo y esperemos que eh, ahora estaremos habiendo una nueva etapa de esta organización. Almagro will have five years to create dialogue and unify divided nations in the Americas. Considering the issues that exist today, he'll have to get a running start when he begins his term on May 25th. Alex Hall, Telesur, Washington. Over 200 were arrested as clashes broke out between police and protesting farm workers in Baja California, Mexico. The workers demanding higher wages and better labor conditions set up roadblocks preventing large farms from transporting their goods north to the United States. Police were sent in to disperse the protesters and clear the roads. While many of the large landowners are pushing for a lowering of taxes, Argentine government has created a program to support small farmers affected by the drop in international commodities prices. From Buenos Aires, our correspondent Laureano Ponce has more. Argentine President Cristina Fernandez announced an important agreement with the Small and Medium Farmers Union, the Argentine Agrarian Federation, to create a $300 million fund designed to help them with the problems caused by the low international prices for agricultural products. Today, with this agreement, with the Agrarian Federation and the announcement about the export taxes segmentation, we're taking a new step towards a possibility for small and medium farmers to be included in Argentina's agricultural production project. Meanwhile, the Rural Society of Argentina, the union which represents the richest landowners in the country, is against this new compensation fund and has requested the government to eliminate export taxes on all crops. 
They hold a view that indicates that capital must succeed over the working and farming families. Right now, the market's global orientation is that these commodities should be produced by big companies with big money. Our political project states that farming must be done by farmers. This new agreement discriminates between the large landowners who dominate the export business and the small producers who have historically been marginalized. In Argentina, only in soybean production, 6% of the producer generates 50% of the grain, while the other 94% produce the other half. This new measure tries to make a difference here, given the importance of big landowners and agricultural trust funds. Economy Minister Axel Kisilov said that the government expects the small and medium producers will produce a record harvest in the coming year. From Buenos Aires, Laureano Ponce, Telesur. And as the European Central Bank opened its new $1.4 billion headquarters in Frankfurt, tens of thousands took to the streets of the German city to protest the austerity policies pushed by the institution and its partners. Police fired tear gas, used a water cannon, and deployed armored personal carriers on blockupied protesters. More than 550 were detained at the most peaceful demonstration targeted the European Central Bank, the European Union, and the International Monetary Fund for pushing policies that protesters say benefit the rich over the poor. And the austerity movements vowed to continue challenging the policies of these lender institutions. Syriza and Podemos will overcome, but we need the other European people to stand up and build a Europe showing solidarity with the people, not with the central banks of Europe. That is how we want Europe. Twenty tourists from Europe, Japan, and Latin America were among the 22 killed in Tunisia, where two men welding and sold staged an attack on a popular museum. Two gunmen began firing on a crowd outside the National Border Museum in the capital of Tunis. Several tourists were then reportedly taken hostage before security forces made their way into the museum and killed the gunmen after a three-hour siege. The museum is near the parliament. Some say it could have been the assailant's target. And despite being more than seven years away, FIFA will be deciding the dates for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar amid continued controversy regarding the host nation and its bid. While the World Cup is usually held during summer months, FIFA's executive will meet to Thursday to definitely move the tournament to the winner in order to adjust for Qatari temperatures. Numerous clubs, including large European teams, are demanding compensation after the change, while the Players' Federation has vowed to not allow the change. The Qatar bid is still marred in controversy over corruption allegations, as well as the deaths of hundreds of migrant workers building the stadiums. More on this on our website, talesurtv.net slash English. Have a nice day.